why don't play hearts of iron 4 vanilla i know you probably all think that and you always ask me about the mods but trust me i never play vanilla modless i always play with some mods today i'm going to talk about some of the mods i play and how they make very small changes to the game that make the game more enjoyable and kind of work around some of those mechanics that aren't very fun so let's talk about the mods that i use as a part of every single game well 99 percent of the games that i play for hearts of iron 4. okay here we are playlists all right do we talk about some of the mods well first of all let's start from the top to the bottom okay expert ai used to be called 4.0 it's 5.0 now uh, it makes the AI make more optimal templates, so it's a little bit overall more challenge. But there are a bunch of other elements you can activate to make the game overall harder. It is kind of letting the AI cheat, though, so I don't really like running it in most games. But if it's a game where I'm playing as, let's say, a major power, and I know I'm going to dumpster everyone, it's kind of worthwhile to take on bigger, chunky divisions. There is an advantage, too, of en enabling this mod and making the new 40-width or 30-width divisions, the big, chunky ones. Because if you encircle those divisions, they kind of become a little bit more exposed, and you tend to find you can funnel into the front lines easier. So not only does it hamper you because they got better stats, but sometimes it can help you because you can defeat them quicker, if that makes sense. But overall, I, in most games, I don't actually have that turned on. Okay, Nuclear Nadal. I think I've used this once or twice, and it just makes nukes more powerful. It makes them reduce your war support more. It reduces your stability more. And I think it actually increases the amount of damage to factories when you bomb. So it feels like nuclear weapons have more of an overall impact. At the moment, nukes are just kind of something you use. Uh, a few on victory points to re reduce stability and war support. And then you also kind of use them just a little bit to weaken divisions overall. They're, they're kind of used in really unconventional ways. Not like the way nukes were used as a part of the war. IRL in Japan. I would recommend this mod, but I don't run it every single game because it does feel like I'm making myself more OP. Because me as the player is more likely to use nukes and the AI sadly is not. So it is kind of a buff for the player. And I don't want to buff myself too much. Okay, next to the tool pack mod. Uh, this is kind of like a, a cheap back end kind of RP tool. You can use it multiplayer uh to like give people land and change lands over but it is kind of a cheat tool that you use kind of in the back end i used to use it for scenarios and multiplayer stuffs i've not run this one in a really long time i suppose if you had a peace conference that went really wacky and very strange uh, i guess what you could do is load up the load up with this tool pack mod make a few tweaks and then jump back into a regular game without the tool pack i suppose you can rp into your life's content if you love rp and you want to make yourself your own alt world scenario but don't want to go through all the effort learning how to mod having this mod running in the background is going to save you a lot of time i would recommend it like and subscribe so i always like to subliminally put in your guys minds that you need to subscribe to my video but i also like to tell you guys to like the video like the video like the video like this video well anyway this one changes the helmet icon to a plus sign when you encircle a division it was made by a friend of mine called zero you can check out a bunch of his mods i think this mod is now a public mod so you can actually install it before it was just a private one among friends and i believe it does a few other things as well in the back end but none of them that wildly affects the overall game they just change a few little easter eggs in the back end that's all it does but for the most part it is a funky little mod for youtubers because it kind of subliminally reminds everyone don't forget to like the video which i think is really fun next up is one of these super essential ones no undeletable unit so uh, the italian focus tree is the first one that comes to mind but there are a bunch of other nations that get spawned divisions that you just can't delete. I think the Soviet Union is another one with the NKVD divisions. However, there are workarounds as a part of the focus tree and decisions. I acknowledge that. But for the most part, I really detest undeletable divisions. I really don't like it. I want to be able to customize my game to how I want to play it and how I want to enjoy it. And it infuriates me when I have like seven or eight different division types as Italy and I can't delete them. But this will allow you to delete those divisions. Um, it looks like it's actually been updated to the latest version too. Oh, wow, that's really cool. I was about to say that there might be some new focus trees with new undeletable divisions that might exist. But by the looks of things, if this guy's updated it, then that might not be the case. Yeah, he's updated for Trial of Allegiance. Man, this guy's committed. I really recommend this mod, by the way. Really, really good. Okay, these are a bunch of mods that I run for Twitch streams, just for laughs and giggles, just for do subathons and whatnot. And uh, just do it just to uh, give flavor to a game so I can rename states in game which is kind of pointless because you don't really see the names very often in games rename leaders that's kind of a fun one uh rename factions is a biggie that's probably the one you see the most and then renaming pies which is also a very small one as well uh there are a few elements in Holy 4 you can rename uh, one of the biggest ones i would like to see is rename countries but apparently it's hard coded and you can't do that unless it's a natural physical mod 
That's my understanding. That might change in the future. Who knows? Another total conversion mod, Road to 56. It's a big one. I kind of wish there was a version of Road to 56 that just was focus trees and didn't have all the other extra stuff. Does that actually exist? Does anyone actually know? Please let me in the comments. Because that would be something I'd be more excited to play more of. Because the problem with Road to 56, as I find, is it, they've added so many extra features now. It's kind of its own mod, and it's not even vanilla Hoi 4 with national focuses, if that makes sense. Next one is another biggie. The Naval Invasion Hotkey. So... Naval Invasions. But this adds three new hotkeys to the game. So for some bizarre reason, the back end of Hoi4 doesn't allow you to change keybinds. However, there are a bunch of keybinds that are missing that can be added if the modders bring them back into the game. It was something that I was annoyed by in the olden days because paratroopers don't have their own hotkey. But apparently it's coded into the game to have a hotkey, but it's just not been assigned. And all this modder has done is got into the game and added that hotkey in for... Naval Invasions, Naval Invasions with Floating Harbors, like the D-Day ones. And the third one is Paratroopers. To be fair, I don't even use the Naval Invasion hotkey. The only one I use is the Paratrooper one. It is so unbelievably amazing. And planning very large scale power drops is a nightmare. Because once again, you have to click to the bottom of the screen, then click where you want to go, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This one allows you to hit a hotkey and you can just keep clicking on the map where you want to do your power drop. Makes life so much easier. It is absolutely amazing. Please install this mod. Next one, getting rid of annoying puppets troops. So if you have an integrated puppet, which is the most integrated form of a puppet, I'll give you an example, Malaysia for the UK, they will hand you divisions just randomly throughout the game. They'll just be like, here's a division, here's a division, here's a division. It might be absolutely terrible. It might be like a four width, which consists of an artillery and an anti-air battalion that's something absolutely dreadful something you won't even need something you won't even ever actually take advantage of but the the, the, the puppets will give you these and hand it to them over and over again giving you the notification at the top of the screen it's really annoying i don't know why this is still a part of the game because if i want to i can just right click on malaysia and say request your entire army and they always say yes so why do they just hand them to me randomly when they make new ones i don't know it's annoying regardless anyway this will remove them giving the ability just to magically hand you divisions without even asking for them i didn't even ask you so don't give me them Anyway, the hotkey. This is a hotkey for nukes. I'm going to be honest with you. I installed this a really long time ago, and I forgot I even had it installed. And what it does is it allows a hotkey for nuking. And if you are going to do a load of nukes, it is assigned to H. So now you can drop a nuke without having to click on the province and then go to the bottom left of the screen and clicking on the nuke. You can now just click on the region and press H. So it gives you really cool abilities where you can like click really randomly all over the place and mash H over and over and over again. If you've got unlimited nukes, for instance, so that means you can drop incredibly large amounts of nuclear bombs. Once again, I, I don't really reach nukes very, very often in Hoi 4. It's only something that happens if it becomes a stalemate and I need an ability to catch up or the games become really slow. That does happen less and less these days because the new versions of Hoi are running very smoothly and really quick on new... Uh, CPUs, so you don't tend to see that becomes a problem anymore. Well, I suppose it's a good problem to have, I guess. But regardless, that gives the hotkey for nukes if you ever use it. Okay, the next one is another essential. Stupid AI won't kick me from a faction. So you've always been in this situation. Let's say you're playing as Argentina, you've annexed Brazil and Uruguay, and eventually you reach the point where you can join the Allies. And you join the Allies to one of the national focuses. Or you're at war with Germany, and so is the UK. And they'll say, oh, do you want to join the Allies? We've got a mutual enemy. And I'm like, oh, thanks, UK. I'd love to join the Allies. And then a week later, they kick you from the faction. And it's like, why? Why? And apparently the reason why, in the back end of the code, is because they're not meant to ask you. They're not meant to ask you. It's because you are seen as a bad guy because you cause world tension. And in the Allies, you're not allowed to have any world tension whilst in the Allies. But it still offers you the ability to join them through National Focus and through them just asking you. Why? I don't know. It's a frustrating mechanic. But now, if they ask you, you'll be in the Allies until you want to leave. And they are not allowed to keep you from factions. The AI is basically banned from kicking you. So this applies to any faction that is a democratic faction. So it's not just the allies. That are, that's how all democratic factions behave. Nice to know. All right, last but definitely not least is an optimization mod. So once upon a time, there was a community called the Spot Mod Community and they developed a mod dedicated to their multiplayer games. And one of the most awesome things about their mod is it run unbelievably fast. Do you know, I will actually argue the reason why that community may have died is probably because they played so much Hoi 4 and so many games because they were so fast that they probably got bored of the game. Yeah, that's a weird thing to say, but I think that might be a legit reason. The average Hoi 4 multiplayer game lasts probably around about 
four or five hours if it's a full game that actually reaches a full conclusion with a proper rule set but spot mods kind of run a lot quicker they sometimes sometimes hit like two or three hours and the first hour they're already hitting the war period but regardless the spot optimization mod was a total conversion mp mod but it also did in the back end some optimizations to the code that allow you to speed up the hoi for experience and my goodness, did it upgrade the speed. It was so fast. Now, the problem is, is most of these optimizations are probably able to be integrated by the Hoi4 devs. So this might not even be valid anymore. Let's have a little cheeky look to see if anyone's even taken advantage of it. It looks like the last update by one of the devs is the 29th of April. So my guessing, this is actually up to date. The original mod included lots of modifications to the actual base game. It's this one, where this is just the optimizations. If you're having trouble with Hoi 4 and you want it to run a little bit faster, my advice is to try and have this. I think for the last few or four games, I've not had this turned on, but I would give it a try, give it a shot, and see if it does make the game faster for you. My understanding in the old days, it did make a massive difference, and it was practical to improve the game speed. Are there any other mods that you run regularly as a part of your Hearts of Iron 4 experience that don't make massive alterations to the game? As you can notice, I play the mods that make very tiny tweaks and changes and adjustments and optimizations to remove some of the annoyances, but they don't tend to fully overhaul the game like Road to 56 or The Great War or Enzeke, for instance, because obviously these are more total war, the more total conversion mods compared to the small mechanical ones. Anyway, any suggestions, please say in the comments below. And yes, these do not work in iron man because they make too much changes to the game some of these will work in iron man and i think some of the hotkey ones will work but some of these that change the game mechanics like kicking as well as changing puppets i don't think those will work in iron man guys enjoy this video don't forget to check this one out have a good day bye bye thanks for watching if you want more content click on the video on screen